I'm Pastor George Borkart, and this is another Higher Things Video Short. Viruses, church, and what to think in the midst of fear. That's the subject of today's Higher Things Video Short. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, donate. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, if you love our passing the faith to the next generation, oh, like, subscribe, ring that bell, donate. Your tax-deductible gift to Higher Things supporting us right there. Keeps us uh, rolling. There's a virus sweeping through the world causing fear everywhere. Um, only 40 Americans have died to this point. 30 of which in the same old folks home in Washington. But that doesn't change the fact that all of us are a little apprehensive about what's going on. And it gives us an opportunity to slow down and talk about the thing as Christians. When plagues would come through, uh, Luther had a way about him of speaking in the way of faith and love. And I think we should we should collect that. When a plague would run through, um, and a plague wouldn't just kill 40 people, it would kill 60 to 70% of towns. If you were in the path of a plague back in the day, and many people, when they would hear the plague coming, would run to the hills. Fear would grip hold of them. And he would encourage his people, Luther would, to stay, to be around the Lord's gifts, to be in church, to be around Jesus, receive him. But those whose faith failed them and those who, who could not stick around and fled to the hills, he would, it's going to be okay, I understand. You do what you need to do. And what we learn from this is, is, understanding first how to love each other as we receive from Jesus. This seems to be a virus that affects the elderly. No one in America has died who is under the age of um, 40. It seems to um, really affect those who've, whose immune system has been compromised. And so if you are one of those people this weekend, and you and you your immune system is compromised or you're in one of those groups that are uh, affected most by this virus and you look at church and you go that's a gathering of people and that's a gathering of death i understand your pastor understands talk to your pastor about it Talk to him and see what he says. But I bet he understands. If you're not feeling well, stay home. If you're not feeling well, love your neighbor and stay home. Talk to your pastor too. But for the sake of your neighbor, stay home. And it's going to be okay. But if you're feeling okay, and you're feeling all right, and you don't have any effects of anything, you don't feel anything, and you're washing your hands, and you're coughing in your arm, and you feel all right, love your neighbor and come to church. We need you at church. You need to be at church. We all need to be together, loving one another at church. And most importantly, receiving from Jesus at church. You don't have to shake everybody's hand. You don't have to hug everybody. You can give them a fist bump. 
I've got a busted finger and I, uh, I pretty much, I have to fist bump people all the time. And so my congregations, um, are trained to do that because you never know what's worse than a little old lady who reaches for it. You can see how, how messed up my finger is. Little re- squeezes and ooh, little old ladies are the worst. So you don't have to, you can give a fist bump, which is 90% better than a handshake when it comes to germs. You could wave, you can give a thumbs up, you could give jazz hands, anything in order to communicate to others that you love them while keeping safe. Your church is going to inevitably take steps in order to keep you safe. They're going to talk to you about the Lord's Supper and what's going on at the Lord's Supper with them. Um, they they may um, uh, add a high alcohol to the to the purificator in order to to purify that. They may um, uh, uh, encourage the use of the chalice with the metal in the chalice and the wine um, is a place. It makes a place where viruses and microbial um, bacteria don't um, don't really flourish. But there's no guarantee in those. But there is guarantee at the Lord's Supper that it is the medicine of immortality. It's gonna it's going to save you forever. That's Ignatius in the second century said that. So, be without fear. Be comforted in Jesus that he's going to carry you through. Be praying for those, who, those 40 Americans and those in the world who've lost loved one, love ones, who fell asleep and lost loved ones. Pray for those who have been affected. Pray for those who are afraid. Pray all the more receive from Jesus in word and his body and blood. We need Jesus in all of this to carry us through, to comfort us, to make it all better. Just like he used to do with the plagues. He's going to do it now. And after we're out the other side, we'll know that he brought us through it. We'll be wise, washing our hands, coughing into our things, not our, our, our uh, elbows, um, giving jazz hands or thumbs ups or knuckles. We'll love our neighbor, not feeling well, not go to church. Please don't. Afraid? We'll love you. It's going to be okay. But all of it is in the context of the good physician. The one who saves. Jesus. He's going to carry us through as he always has. And if the worst were to happen, if all our fears were realized because of Christ on the cross, it'll be fine. It's always going to be fine. Be comforted. In the midst of a world that seems to have gone fearful and crazy, be confident. Trust in Jesus. He's going to carry you through. You're going to be okay. And then, wash those hands. Take those vitamins. Stay out of places that are dangerous. If you're not feeling well, stay home. All the things that are suggested. And all the while, look up. Because he's coming soon. And your redemption draws near. I'm Pastor George Borkart, and this has been another Higher Things Video Short.